my guest was shown that our technology and our electricity will be wiped out. No TV, no cell phones, no GPS, not even cars. I'm here with Colonel James Durham. And uh, James, you spent a career in the military over 30 years. Well, your faith has been so stretched by your supernatural stories of what happened to you in, in the military. Um, uh, you, you, you have visions. You visited heaven many times. Uh, tell me what you saw about our power grid going down. Mm -hmm. This was actually a two-part series of visions. And the first one, I uh, was suddenly I found myself translating the spirit to a place and it looked like an ancient factory. Everything was made out of wood. There was very little metal there. But in the middle of this open bay, there was an absolutely huge machine. And as I looked at it, I had never seen anything like that in my life. And my thoughts were, there's probably no one on earth alive today who knows how to operate that machine. But some, at one time, people knew how to make that machine work. And it had long leather belts on it that I thought were probably attached to a water wheel or something to make the power for the machine. And the Lord said to me, there's a time coming when people are going to have to learn again how to build and operate machines that don't require electricity or fossil fuels. And uh, wow. So then I suddenly went into a different place in a vision. And I was walking through this large area and it looked really desolate. And I saw tools that had been just discarded there. And there were many, many different kinds of tools. And it looked like some kind of really raging fire had swept through the area. And some of those big metal tools had actually melted together and become totally useless. As I continued to walk, there was a pile of computers, totally useless, no electricity, no, no grid, no internet. And then I saw cell phones on the ground. And I heard the Lord say again, a day is coming when all of these things that you've become accustomed to are gonna go away because of the power grid. And you will have to learn to trust in me. And you will have to learn to do things in different ways. Uh, you also, had a vision in which Jesus said to you, I'm coming soon and my people are not ready. Is this why you wrote your book on, on prepping? Because the world just doesn't need another book on prepping. <laughs> Absolutely right. And uh, in a series of visions, and in two of them, that's when the Lord spoke to me this way. And I saw the Lord coming with the white-robed army of heaven. And he, they were on horses that come in my way, and I'm excited about seeing them. But just as they got to me, Jesus stopped, and he looked right into my eyes, and he said, Behold, I'm coming very soon, and my people are not ready. And there was a sadness in his voice on that last part. And then a few days later, I was in heaven again, and the same kind of experience. And Jesus rode right up to me, and he said something a little different this time. This time he said, Behold, I'm coming very quickly, and my people are not prepared. And I felt this strong uh, urging in my spirit that the Lord was telling me, you and others need to begin to prepare, and you need to teach other people how to prepare. And uh, not to uh, do some of the typical things that people do when they're uh, thinking about this. You're, you're not talking about storing up food or water. What are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about that we need to become mentally tough so that whatever circumstance comes, we can stand. And as Paul said, when you've done everything to stand, stand. We're going to become that kind of resilient uh, followers of Jesus when we're really prepared. The second part of that was that we need to have spiritual resilience because things are going to happen in the Spirit so quickly that if we can't move with the Lord, we're going to be left behind. We're going to be lost. So we need to right now build that kind of resilience that we can stand no matter what, keep the Spirit strong, stand on faith and believe in the Lord and trust Him 
that He will be with us and take care of us. And what would you say to someone that says, well, all that is true, but we've got 50, 100 years. I'm not going to fool with that right now. Mm -hmm. There are people who say that. And um, my concern is that they're not discerning well enough in the Spirit, and they need a gift of spiritual discernment, because everything that I see in Jesus' teachings about the last days is they could come right now. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. And it's, uh, it may be a hundred years. If so, hallelujah, we'll live with it and we'll expect another day. But it could be today. And if, if I really believe and understand that, and I do, then I need to be ready every day, every moment of every day to meet Him when He does return. And uh, so I believe that it's imperative that we must prepare. And a lot of people have gotten tired, tired of the messages about it. They've heard things over and over again, and it seems like nothing manifested. Um, I'm just uh, believing, and Jesus told me, tell people, don't give up. Don't get tired. Don't waver, but hold to what I have taught you, and to hold to the notion that it might happen any minute. Well, Jesus says no man knows the day or hour. Right. Jesus told you, you better tell people to be prepared. James says special doors to heaven are being demonically blocked to prevent answers to your prayers. When we come back, James will share how you can have heaven open for your prayers, for all of them. Hello, YouTube, Mishpucha. Mishpucha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. James, recently you had an open heaven vision. Yes, I, I have. And it's a vision uh, similar to some I've had in the past, but this was very recent. And when I talk about open heaven, I'm not seeing uh, something like rectangular shaped doors or windows, but I see like a round opening that it, almost like it goes through the clouds and then, then heaven is opened up. And in this vision, I was kind of hovering in space <laughs> and uh, looking at the, um, op there were several of these, I call them portals instead of doors. There were several portals that were open into heaven. And it was my desire to go through one of those portals and spend some time with Jesus. That's one of my favorite pastimes is to spend time with Jesus. But as I looked up at these portals, dark clouds started covering over the openings of almost all of them. And the clouds would move, but then another dark cloud would come in and cover it up. In, in other words, if you knew where they were, you could get your prayers answered. You, 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 you could accomplish everything the Bible says you're supposed to, but you have to know where it is. But So what did you see? So I saw that um, covering, and I prayed to the Lord to break the power of the enemy to cover the open portals. And it was then that I came to understand that these were portals for prayer. And uh, as soon as I asked the Lord and I stood with Him to rebuke them, all the dark clouds went away. All the portals were suddenly open. Now these were not those tiny little openings, they were huge. And immediately the prayers of the people were going through. Now the Lord told me that He was showing it to me that way, but actually the prayers were never stopped. <laughs> It's a delusion that the enemy has to try to bring doubt into our lives, to make us afraid and think, well, heaven's closed, my prayers are not being heard. And I hear that from people all the time. The Lord's not hearing my prayers. Yes, He is. He's hearing your prayers. And even if you're seeing the dark cloud, that's something that's dark within us. And what we need to do is to rebuke that, to get rid of that so that we can see it and we have the confidence to know our prayers are getting through to the Lord. You wrote an entire book on spiritual preparation. And if I was God, I would have picked a colonel to do a manual on how to survive in, in the last days. Give me a couple of the steps. I, I happen to really like the step called let go of excessive baggage. Yes. 
Well, that one also began with a vision. <laughs> That's a surprise, right? But anyway, I was walking on this really beautiful road up a mountain, and it was the road was going around the mountain, so you're constantly getting closer and closer to the top. It was smooth, it was easy, which is a little unusual, but that's what I was experiencing. And I suddenly came to a barrier, and the barrier blocked the whole road, and there was a sign there that said, to proceed, leave all unnecessary baggage behind. And uh, I saw several bags there that other people had left behind. So I dropped everything I had. It opened and I moved up. And so I began to pray for understanding about those bags. What is it that we really need to drop? And the Lord showed me that there's some spiritual baggage that we need to get rid of. You know, it's hard enough to carry physical stuff, but if you're also weighed down by spiritual things. And the Lord was saying that one of the things we need to get rid of is all unresolved sin. And he's already created a process to do that. All we have to do is repent and ask Jesus to forgive us and to come into our hearts again. He also said, get rid of all the doctrines of man. Get back to my doctrine. But unload all that baggage, stuff that you learned all through your life that's just really not biblical. He said, get rid of false guilt. Now, false guilt is when we feel guilty about something we had absolutely no control over. That's false guilt. You're not guilty for what you couldn't do or couldn't have control over. But a lot of people carry that baggage. And we see it across the country now. We're being told to feel guilty about things that happened in the past that we had no control over. We weren't even alive when some of these things happened. But, but even beyond that, things that we have done that we know according to the Bible were forgiven, as long as the devil knows that there's still shame and guilt, he will come and torment a And we person. need to get rid of that. How do you, how do you get rid of that? Well, I, I think there's a special way, but it's very hard for us to conceptualize. Uh, we know that the Lord says that when He forgives our sin, He chooses to forget it. Right. And He doesn't bring it up to His memory ever again. Now, you and I and anyone watching this were created in God's image. So a part of who you are is someone who has the ability to forget. The problem we have is we've been taught to bring it up and bring it up and bring it up. And what we need to do is learn how to forget, how to do like our Father does, like Jesus does, and forget these things. And we have that ability if we'll exercise it and use it. So a part of becoming prepared is to activate the gifts that God has put into us and to be able to forget the things that are holding us back. My goodness, once that happens, It'll be nothing but Jesus inside of us. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? James was taken Amen. to heaven and saw rooms in heaven that are available to us, like mm -hmm. the heavenly healing room and the glory room. The gifts he saw are available now. Next. Well, I'll tell you what, you are provoking me to jealousy, Colonel. Good. Tell me about some of these rooms you've seen. I know, you know you've seen many of them, but tell me uh, about the uh, healing room. Okay. Uh, in a vision, I was carried in the spirit. Now, um, people sometimes don't understand what you're talking about. I think it's something the Lord does for us so it'll make it real. But in my uh, perception, my spirit, soul, and body, were taken to the, just to an open door into heaven. And I was there with this huge crowd of people. I don't know how many there were because it was dark outside where we were, but there were hundreds of people standing there. And just in front, I saw this room and uh, the door was not like a rectangular shaped door, but it was like a long arch. And it looked like maybe 20, 30 people could go in at one time side by side. So it was a huge opening. I think when God opens something, He does a big job with it. And so I was in, I just felt like I was invited into the room. And I was hoping that some of the other people would go, but they wouldn't, they just stood there. And I couldn't understand that, but I pushed my way through the crowd and I entered into that room. And the first thing I did was to look back, was anyone following me? They weren't, no, they were still standing there, not seemingly not knowing what to do. So I just felt like the, the Lord was calling me into that room. And that room was filled with like an amber colored glow. And it was warm, it was powerful. And I, I just knew that was the glory of the Lord that was shining in that room. And as I moved into the room, 
I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, this is a healing room. And uh, it was uh, explained to me then, it was for my healing, but it was also for healing other people. And it was to release anointings of the gifts of healings. And as I stood there, I began to receive words of knowledge and about healing. And it was not just healing the physical body, but also gifts for healing the spirit and for healing the soul. And I suddenly had this sense that somebody had really been hurt, been betrayed, that somebody had done something to them that had caused such a scar in their spirit that it had hampered their ability to move in the spirit. And so I don't know who was hearing, but I released that word. I spoke that word in faith that someone would hear, the Lord is healing your hurt right now. And I believe that even as we talk about it, that healing power still goes out. And I'm believing that as we speak of this, someone who is listening right now, who has been through that kind of a hurt, been betrayed, been left behind, uh, been abandoned, that God right now wants to heal that hurt and to set you free from the limitations of that hurt, free to move with Him into the power of these last days. And then I began to get words of knowledge for spiritual healing. And one that I received was about people who had pain in their necks and that it was so uncomfortable. They suffered pain and it seemed like no medicine that's uh, made by man would heal that pain. And the Lord's saying, I'm healing that pain right now. And I believe that someone who's listening to this is going to get healed of neck pain right now because that anoint I'm still feeling that anointing. I feel it flowing right now. And then I began to sense that somebody who had great pain in their ankles, had difficulty moving, was just about to be released from not only the limit to moving, but also the pain. And so just release a word of knowledge that God will take away your pain, take away the limitations, that you will no longer be held back from your purpose in the kingdom because of those ankles. And then I heard, and I hear again now, that someone with a problem in their right knee have a lot of pain and difficulty in the right knee. The Lord is healing that right now. And suddenly I saw this huge pitcher of oil. And this was an oil of healing. And like in the last chapter of the book of James, it says that they'll pray for you and then anoint you with oil. And I just watched as the Lord poured this oil over people that I could see in distant places. And I believe that this was not just for me, but it's for you, it's for anybody who's willing to be led by the Lord to be carried into the healing room, receive that anointing, receive that healing, and then the oil, not only for healing, but an oil of anointing for you to reach out and minister this same thing to other people. And as I was uh, really enjoying this and wanted to stay a lot longer, my, and my attention was directed to an, a door on the other side of the room and it was another one of those arched doors. And in that room, there was a blue glory light. And I moved into that other room as I felt the Lord was leading me. And there were a couple of things that were being released in that room. One was a revelation knowledge about things to come. And a second one was uh, that the Lord was uh, releasing a, um, a kind of a preparation that He's pouring over us an oil that will help us to prepare ourselves for what's coming in the future, for the perilous times, and an oil of protection so that we don't have to worry about what's coming from the world because we're protected by the Lord. I believe a lot of what you wrote in your book came from the revelation in the glory room. Mm -hmm. uh, I also believe that if you will look in the camera and pray right now, you can release the glory on people. Amen. Amen. Whoa, <laughs> uh, sorry, I just got hit by it. <laughs> Don't apologize, tell it to hit me. <laughs> uh, Lord, I just pray that you'll release this power of your presence, this heavy weighty presence, and that it will go um, to whoever is listening, wherever you are, the, the spirit is not limited by time or space, and that the Lord will release to you this same anointing of the glory. 
and the same power of His presence and that you will experience the things that I've been experiencing and even more as the Lord uses you to be a key part of the, His army in the last days, that the Lord will just fill you full of that glory. And so I release it now to you, just freely you've received, Jesus said, freely give. I freely received, now I freely give it to you in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. Amen and amen. And there are so many of you that have never had experiential knowledge with God through the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua. Jesus, tell them you're sorry of your, for your sins and believe that His blood washes away your sins and tell them to come in and be your Savior and your Lord. That's simple. Call now and get James Durham's revelatory eye-opening book, Alert, Perilous Times, A Prepper's Guide to the Last Days, and his exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways to Prepare for the End Times, plus his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9698. James Durham's book is your essential guide to getting spiritually prepared to have victory over these perilous times we are facing. Through this book, you will learn how to be biblically ready, prepped to go through the difficult times and be an overcomer. Discover how to not be fearful of the end times, but be prepared with faith, love, and supernatural power. Understand why you must not allow the enemy to block your ability to see into the spiritual realm. Understand how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit and live in the atmosphere of the glory of God. You will also receive James Durham's exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways to Prepare for the End Times. James will teach you how to be a spiritual prepper with the ability to navigate the perilous times ahead with supernatural faith, hope, and confidence. How to be prepared because this could be the last day. James includes powerful prayers to help you receive the anointing of the spiritual prepper. Plus, you will receive his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. James Durham has received several third heaven dreams and visions regarding God's next prophetic season. He includes anointed prayers, including a prayer that no weapon can be forged against you, a prayer that the Lord would open your eyes, ears, and heart to perceive. He prays for your healing and gives you words of knowledge. Don't miss out on getting James Durham's revelatory eye-opening book, Alert, Perilous Times, A Prepper's Guide to the Last Days, and his exclusive two-part audio CD series, Top 10 Ways to Prepare for the End Times, plus his bonus audio CD, God's Next Prophetic Season. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9698. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9698 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.